Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to download and install our free blog post template for Divi's classroom layout pack. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right, so the first thing you need to do is to head over to this blog post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. You need to click here and then enter your email address and then click on download. Next, you wanna click on download the files. And as you can see, they downloaded here on my computer. So the next step now is to unzip this file. So I'm going to show in Finder. So when you unzip, you get this file, which is a JSON file. So make sure you unzip it because if you don't unzip, this won't work. Okay, so I'm just going to pull this over to the side. So the next step now is to head over to our website. At the moment, I'm logged into my WordPress admin dashboard. So let's go and take a look and see how our default blog post looks like. So I'm going to come over here, click on all posts. And I'm just going to view this in a new tab. So this is the default blog layout. So as you can see, there's a lot, uh, there isn't a lot of uh, development here. So what we're going to do is to apply our template and this should transform this blog post. All right, so to do that now, remember we unzipped that file earlier on, which is right here, okay? So we need to install it into our theme builders. So what you want to do is to scroll down here, click on Divi, and then you want to go to theme builder. Next, you want to click on portability, click on import, making sure these two checks are on these first two items. Now it's time to install our template. So I'm just going to drag and drop it here. Or you can do it manually by clicking here and then navigating to where the file is on your computer. So once this is done, all you have to do now is to import DV theme builder template. And now you can see that this has been applied. And this is a blog post template. Next, I just have to hit save changes. And then over here, if I refresh, you can see now that this has been transformed. It now has this uh, background and when I scroll down, it has this uh, border here and everything is styled much differently. And you can also see here we have some paper clips and so on. Further down here, we also have the information about the author, related posts, the comments area, and also this newsletter section here. So. What I need to do next now is to show you how you can go in, set up your newsletter, opt, opt in here so it adds all your subscribers to the mailing list. I'm also going to show you how to go in and customize, you know, a few of the colors, the fonts, uh, just to make this fit with your branding. So let's go ahead and do that. So back over here now, I am now going to go into our templates by clicking here on edit. So this now takes me into the builder. All right, so first things first, let's take a look and see how we can customize the section area here. So I'm going to click on this gear icon to go into my section settings. Now over here on the background, we can see that uh, we have this image right here. So if I delete it, you can see that it's gone completely. So that's where our image is. So you can add your own image and that's pretty much what we can do here on this section. Next, let's take a look and see how this style here, the section divider here can be replaced, changed, or even adjusted. So what you want to do now on the design tab is you want to come over here to dividers and the divider here is applied to the bottom. So you click on the bottom tab and this is the style as you can see. So there's a few things you can do here. We can increase the size. So you can see here I'm increasing the size. So perhaps you want it like that or you can reduce it a bit more or over here you can totally totally change this so these are the different styles that you can go with to make sure you customize this to fit your branding so as you can see there's quite a few here to choose from and you can just go with the one you like so this is where that setting is so i'm not going to make any changes here so i'm just going to close out of this and next, let's take a look at our title. So let's say you have a specific font that you use for your headings. What you can do is you can just uh, click here on design and you want to target this main heading here. So as you can see, it's heading one. So in your case, if you have a specific font um, style on your website, you can choose it from here. So, you know, I like pop-ins, so I'm just gonna go in and select my font here. 
We can also make it bold and we can also change the color here. So as you can see, there's a lot that you can do to really customize this text. And this is where you would come and make those changes. Moving on, we also have, this is our featured image. So there's nothing much really we can do here apart from perhaps maybe adding some rounded corners. So you'd come over here to the design tab, click on border, and you can add your rounded corners here. So when you add your images, your images are always going to have the rounded corners. Okay, so that's all we can do with the image. Next over here, we also have this metadata. So if I click on this gear icon, you can see this is the post author. So again, just like before, what you can do here is you can specifically go and change uh, the link itself. You can change the font. So right now it's set to default. We can choose poppins. Now notice what happens when I do that. The font here has updated. We can also change the color. So as you can see here, as I'm cycling through this, the colors are changing. Okay, so that's what you can do to each and every part here to customize your fonts. Let's move on to the next section. Now, this section here is also very important because it has our post content. So this is what's going to show our blog post. So let's take a look and see what we can do here. So when you mouse anywhere over here, you can see that we can go in and specifically target any area here. So let's say you want to change your paragraph text. You can just click here on this gear icon. Right now we have Montserrat, so we can change this to say Poppins. So I'm just doing this to show you how easy it is to go in and change your fonts. So I've changed my font here. We can also change the color. Of course, you don't want to be using that color right there, but uh, this is where you can make those changes. Next, we also have our titles. So if I click on this gear icon here, you can see I'm targeting heading one. So this is where we would come and change our font, change our weight. Uh, we can also increase the size and change the color. So once you make these changes, the changes are going to be applied across the whole website on your blog post. So you could go ahead and do this on uh, heading two, heading three. And uh, for the images here, you can also add some rounded corners just to match what we did earlier on. So let's go with five. So any image that you add in your post area is going to have those rounded corners. Okay, so you want to continue and also add um, formatting to your headlines up to heading six. Now, in my case, I usually go up to heading four or sometimes even heading three because I rarely use heading four, five, and six. Okay, so that's your post content. Now let's move on. And in fact, before we move on to the next item, I want to show you where these paper clips were added. So I'm going to go into my section settings here, click on background. And first of all, you can see we have a color here. So you can change it by clicking here. So you can see the color has been applied to the back to the background section. Okay. Now, here's the thing. We also have the paper clips and so on. So that's this image right here. So if you're not a fan of that image, you can just uh, delete it here and you can see now everything is gone and all you have now is pretty much your background. So you can add a bit of color to that. So you can just add whatever color you want to match your branding. Okay. Now let's move on to the next part. And the next part here is going to be the author section. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So first of all, let's see how we can change this text. So I'm going to click on this gear icon to go into my text settings. So this author here is, you can see here it's heading two. So what you want to do is to come over here to design, heading text and target heading two. So this is where you can change your font. So let's go with Poppins, for example, and set this to bold. So this is where you make your changes. If you want to change the color, this is where you can go in and change the color. Let's move on to the next item. So this is our blurb. So to start off with, we have our post author here. So we can change our font as well. Now notice what I've done here. In fact, let's just make this bold so you can really distinguish this. Now notice what I've done. Every time I'm making changes to this, I'm mousing over this area so I can uh, have access to 
these uh, paint brushes. So this will take me directly to the item I need to make changes to. So for example, here we've selected the paragraph, so I can go straight here and change my font. I can change my color and so on. Okay. Now we also have this image here. If you're not a fan of that image, you can just uh, get rid of it by deleting it. Moving on, we also have this related posts uh, section. Now again, we have this uh, blue color here in the background, so which you can remove or adjust by just coming over here and choosing, you know, the color that you want. So that is where you make your main background change. And uh, also, let's say you want to change this text here, which says related posts. You can just click on this gear icon. And now this takes you to your text settings. So again, I'm going to mouse over this area and click on the paintbrush. And this now has taken me to heading to font. So this is where, again, I can change this to pop-ins. We can change the color here to white if you want to. But uh, in this case, I think the designers left it as black because they wanted to match with this image right here. Okay, so that's all we need to do here. I'm going to close, move on to the next parts. So this part here is the comments area. Again, you can go in and customize this by clicking on this gear icon and then targeting every single item. So we can target the comments area here and change the color. As you can see, so it's pretty straightforward to go in and make changes to each and every item here. All right, so now that we've done the comments area, let's move on to the newsletter. Now, this is very, very important because if we don't get this right, this will not work. So first of all, let's start here with this keep in touch with our newsletter. This is our main uh, sort of like text. So first of all, we need to uh, click here on the paintbrush and this now takes us to our font, which we're going to change to pop-ins. We can also change the font weights to bold, okay? And perhaps you want to reduce the size a little bit. So we can go with 52. Okay, now let's take a look here at our email opt-in. So this requires uh, some settings because if we don't, uh, this will not collect your subscribers onto the database. All right, so the first things for us, what we need to do here is to scroll down until we go to email account. So this is where you choose your email service provider. So if you haven't got one, I highly recommend you set it up for this to work. So there are several here, as you can see, Active Campaign, Aweber, and so on. But um, by default, I think we have MailChimp. So in your case, you want to also create a mailing list. So the list is within your service provider. So this is where you want all your subscribers to be added to when collecting your emails. So once you've uh, created it, it's going to show up right here on this drop down, And then you can just click on Add. Now, once that's done, you need to also decide what fields you want to have. So in this case, we only need the email, but if you wanted to add the first name, you can just add it by clicking here like that. Okay. Now let's take a look at success action. So the success action here is also very important. You can do it in two ways. You can have a, a specific message showing here. By default, it says success but you can also, you know, add whatever text you want to add here. But you can also have a custom page where people go to as soon as they hit subscribe. So this could be a thank you page, but you need to have created the thank you page beforehand so that when you click on this drop down here, when you add custom URL, you can just add your URL over here. So that is how you set up this email newsletter. So let's take a quick look one more time at our blog post template. So this is what it looks like. So as you can see here, it's highly customizable, but it gives us the initial layout to get us up and running really, really fast. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.